Uh, hi everyone, Long Thinny Wait Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Mick Jenkins project, The Patience. My dude is on the cover looking like he's out of patience. This is a new record from Chicago rapper Mick Jenkins. His fourth, I believe, and comes a few years after his last elephant in the room. The thing to know about Mick is that he is a lyricist's lyricist and a passionate one at that. His raw talent for flows and wordplay was apparent even about 10 years ago when he dropped his uh, breakout mixtape, The Waters, a wavy and conceptual project that has continued to overshadow uh, pretty much everything he's put out since. His attempt at a commercial debut with the healing component uh, felt like a more or less watered down Mick Jenkins was being presented to us. It was definitely a toned down and less potent Mick Jenkins, which led to this album album not really landing with his core audience. And since then, I think he's had trouble finding the footing necessary to make another big splash. Now, the following pieces of a man and elephant were definitely an improvement. And while I heard a few teasers I liked from this new LP over here, I have been dragging my feet on reviewing it, mostly out of fear that I would be in for another so-so Mick project. But truth be told, The Patience is actually Mick's strongest album in years, which is interesting because it doesn't look like a lot on the surface necessarily with its 11 tracks and bare bones 27 minute runtime. But there's actually been at least a few examples of these very trim but mighty hip hop albums dropping this year, be that Scaring the Hose or uh, even McKinley Dixon's beloved Paradise Jazz. And I would say The Patience is another example of that. It's also one of those albums whose best qualities are apparent right from the jump with the opener Michelin star, which proves that after over over a decade of releasing music, Mick still has gas in the tank, he still has tricks up his sleeve, specifically as he's tearing through bars about cooking, hunger, plating, sous chefing. It is the jazz rap equivalent to high quality in small portions, like a shishi foo foo dish of ratatouille with a, a super decadent sauce streaked across the porcelain. We then get an even bigger helping of bars with a dramatic string kissed instrumental on show and tell, where Mick raps about leading by example, outgrowing the people that he once knew, becoming more patient, and also not caring so much about lists and accolades as an artist. There are numerous standout lines like, uh, loading up magazines like where the real journalists at. And this shift in Mick's personal and artistic focus that he's rapping about here uh, most definitely feels real considering how reinvigorated he comes across uh, on these new tracks. It's as if he's overcome some sort of blockage. Uh, meanwhile, the Freddie Gibbs feature on the track is a great pairing and is one of a few great guest spots on this thing as Sitting Ducks also features Benny the Butcher. Though I'll say I'm not crazy about the song cutting off immediately as soon as Benny is done rapping. Kind of feels like we could have gotten more out of this track potentially. But I do think Benny's contribution is solid and he's clearly here on this record out of appreciation for Mick's artistry and how could he not appreciate it with some of the sharp wordplay right at the start of the track. I'm above can't, we apostrophes. Also this couple of bars where he's making all of these like triangle, triangular references. Mick is really bringing it back to the sort of pen game on these tracks that make you want to like rewind a song. And of course after this we can't forget about J.I.D. on Smoke Breakdance, where his and Mick's flows skip across this beat like a stone on an infinite pond of dreamy laid-back jazz instrumentation. That ba da 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 ba da 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 tight flow contrasts really nicely from uh, how loose the drums and keys feel underneath. Now it's at this midpoint of the record that Mick uh, starts taking things uh, totally on his own, and uh, we start hitting a lull as a result of that. 007 and 2004 both have their pros, especially with the hype delivery Mick brings to the table on the latter of those two. But both tracks overall are a little one-dimensional and short of breath. Could have used a strong chorus or some building out or something. I would also say this is the case to an extent for uh, Roy G. Biv, uh, which is also a little scant, but I feel like that is slightly made up for by the uh, uh, rapid fire clever bars one after the next uh, with all of these color references, which leads to a lot of great symbolism and metaphors, even a cute couple of Frank Ocean references. Then things really begin to pick up with Pasta, where Mick brings his most over-the-top vocal performance yet. You pray about it! I'm the apex! Ah! 
We also get this grand horn heavy beat on the instrumental too. And I wouldn't just say Mick sounds hungry on this track. Uh, he's starving and is about to consume the entire world. From here, Guapanese is another highlight on the record, a very topically focused highlight at that, where Mick goes on about money, love of money, obsession with it, and the dark pathways that can often lead you down to, and, and the shallowness that comes with that too. Then with the closing track, Mop, which I think is a solid track all around, uh, more or less feels like we're kind of getting um, a, a check-in with Mick. Not a grand finale or anything like that, but more of an update on where he is personally and artistically at the moment. And it sounds like Mick is in a good place in terms of uh, making the kind of music he wants to make, expressing himself in the fashion that he prefers, having control over his work and his creativity, and I can only hope uh, with that and this album overall, uh, even if it is a little short and it did leave me wanting more, uh, that this is the start of a new chapter for Mick creatively that just continues to climb upward from here. Because in the early and mid 2010s, he did come out of the gate with uh, more potential than most, honestly. And for whatever series of reasons, that talent just didn't get fully capitalized on, or at least it didn't manifest in a run of amazing projects. However, it sounds like Mick is still here, he's still fighting, he's still kicking, he's still screaming, he's still writing. And while there are quite a few highlights on this thing, I hope you can kind of extend this momentum and energy out into an even grander album down the road. I'm feeling a strong seven to a light eight on this one, Tran. Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Mick Jenkins, uh, forever.